In this video, we're going to have a look at the rules associated with reach within the Mithras rule set. Hello and welcome back. If you don't know me, my name is Inwills and I am a content creator and streamer from the United Kingdom. I create and publish videos about role playing games and also aspects of being a GM in the Gibbering GM series. So please, if you found this or any of my videos supportive, then please do consider supporting the channel any way you can. Mithras has detailed rules about combat which are explained within the core rulebook and one aspect of melee combat that really appeals to me is the idea of reach. Now while sizes of opposing weapons actually affects how much damage is stopped by parrying, the reach of a weapon affects whether the opponent is within range of the weapon being used and whether or not they can do damage. This might be a little bit confusing to start off with but let me give you an example which I hope will clear those muddy waters. So imagine two opponents battling it out in melee combat. The first is a nimble rogue type character using a couple of daggers, while the second is a huge hulking minotaur who is wielding an enormous two-handed battle axe. Now, in order for the rogue to actually hit the minotaur, they are going to have to need to duck and dive under the swinging battle axe. Only when they've manoeuvred themselves closer will they be able to damage the minotaur. Not doing so will actually result in the rogue just hitting and damaging the battle axe of the minotaur. So in the example that I gave you, the reach of the dagger is short, while the reach of the enormous battle axe is very long. Now you can find a table of the reach and sizes of weapons on page 94 of the core rulebook, but let me summarise them here for you. First of all, we have a reach that is classified as touch, and these are basically unarmed combats. We have have weapons that have a short reach which are generally weapons less than half a meter long i.e the dagger. We then have medium reach weapons which are single handed weapons longer than half a meter. We then have long reach weapons which are single handed thrusting weapons like a spear or two handed weapons and finally we have very long reach weapons which are huge two handed weapons, pole arms and lances. You have to remember that reach is an optional rule and it only comes into play when the difference between the two weapons reaches is two or more. So in the previous example we had the dagger which has a reach of short while the huge swinging battle axe has a, a reach of very long and so there's two differences um, between these two reaches. So the rules governing reach um, allows you to apply a system to your combat that basically players or monsters or characters with longer reached weapons can actually keep other monsters or opponents with short reach rep weapons at bay. So let's take the example of the Minotaur and the Rogue. The Minotaur has a very long reached weapon and the short, um, the Rogue, sorry, has a short reach weapon. So we can implement the rules to do with reach. So the Rogue with the short reach weapon can only damage the battle axe. This is because the battle axe has a very long reach and he's been wielded uh, round around keeping the rogue at bay. So any damage that the rogue does will be to the battle axe itself. One of the reasons why weapons have hit points. Now, in order for the rogue to actually hit the minotaur rather than 
its weapon, the rogue is going to have to close range and get beneath or under that swinging battle axe closer to the minotaur. Now, the rogue can do this um, if it rolls and hits and gains a special. And it can use the special called close range to dip inside that swinging battle axe. So once the rogue has slipped closer range, it can then start hitting the minotaur itself. So the little short reach daggers can start stabbing the minotaur as much as they want. But the Minotaur is now at a disadvantage because the Minotaur has a weapon that has a very long reach. It cannot bring the most damaging edge, i.e. the battle axe edge, into play with to attack the rogue. It can still attack the rogue, but it will be using the, the shaft part or the stick part of the weapon. And so instead of doing a hefty amount of damage, if it hits, it will only do 1d3 plus 1 damage. And so you can see instantly that that there's a significant decrease in damage if that rogue can close range and get underneath that swinging battle axe. But remember the Minotaur still has uh, an option at this point because if it can gain a special then it can actually increase the range and so put the rogue back at a distance and so it will be able to engage that more damaging end of his axe. In future rule videos, we will look at the rules associated with closing and opening range in more detail. But hopefully you can see how the um, Minotaur and the Rogue and the Reach rule really adds depth to the um, combat. One thing you might have in your head is that you might say, well, yes, but the Rogue and the Minotaur does keep closing and opening range. Yeah, quite possibly. But what happens when the Rogue or the Minotaur cannot move any further? You know, the Minotaur is backed up against the wall. It's got nowhere to go. And so the Rogue, it cannot actually increase the range. Or by that time, maybe the Rogue has found an appropriate artery and has slashed it. Hope you found that rule video helpful and let me know if you implement REACH into your campaigns. I would love to know all about it in the comments below. Until then, if you found this or any of my other videos helpful, then please consider supporting the channel in any way you can. Until next time, I hope all your opposed roles are successful and gain a well-deserved special. And yes, sneak underneath that battle axe. Enjoy your role-playing games, everyone. See you later. Bye.